<laughs> Can you hear me now? Yeah. Perfect. First of all, thank you for two things. One for coming. We appreciate your support. And the other, Marcella has revealed that all of you brought checks for dues. So everybody in this here is paid out. So when you see other people around here at events, you can kill in their cases. You don't have to worry about it, right? No, we have a few things that we want to talk about. And of course, obviously, we want to talk about whatever you all want to talk about. Uh, one thing, uh, Marcel, you want to come up and start to give us a uh, report and also talk to you about what the situation is with manufacturers and our future schedule for lunches. Thank you, Mr. President. <coughs> so, so, yeah, actually, great news. Where everybody that's present has paid, everybody that's here, so we really appreciate that. Obviously, as a non for profit, it does help all this money to come in so we can do this kind of luncheons so when we need to and gatherings and so forth. So, thank you for that. The treasury report right now is at $2,257. That's so what we have in the treasury right now. Uh, we met at a board meeting at the first of the month. And we talked about this month coming up, and we didn't have a sponsor, and we decided to get us all together and kind of have an open forum where we can talk about some of the needs you guys feel we need to improve, how to improve, and just continue strengthening uh, the association. One of the things I mentioned to the, to the board that was present was um, I've been visiting uh, a lot of the manufacturers, and, and the feelings are is, you know, the state, the state of, of, of sales and so forth right now, it's kind of a, a bit of a, a slow heading down, and um, they're trying to find what is the best return for investment for them. So as you all know, when they bring a car, they have to fly a car in, ship a car in, uh, then it has to usually come to facilities or garage shops and so forth, the car gets driven, they have to fly executives, they have to pay for hotels, uh, and so forth, and they have to pay for the meal. It may not sound a lot, but their budgets have been constrained. So they're really trying to find where they should be putting some of the money at. Of course, uh, providing the vehicles for evaluation for you guys is the top priority. And how we can, and, and some of the ideas with this goes is how can we make it, uh, these manufacturers who want to come and join us on these monthly lunches, and what are we going to give them in return? So the return on investment, what are we going to do in return some of the things that I'd like to see and, and you've probably been hearing from Angela and I'm sure you hear from everybody about excuse me the vehicles you're reviewing and the importance of getting these reviews now uh, we're being engaged everybody's being engaged the manufacturers being engaged the public relations uh, management teams being engaged and all this stuff so it's kind of changing it's 2020 and it's, it's, it's evolving so I think it's kind of open forum uh, of what we can do to really attract these manufacturers if we have a particular client that comes in, brings a vehicle, and what can we do in return to write stories and get the stories back to them, get it to your audience, whether it's video, whether it's newspaper, however you're doing social media, and we put a packet together and we send it back to them, showing number algorithms. You spend fifteen thousand dollars, but you're going to get in return. $280,000, a million dollars worth for bringing your vehicle here and showcasing it with us. So I think it's something uh, to discuss and be open for. And you know, we're here to, to talk about it with you guys. Thank you. <coughs> I think I asked you for work, but that's what you're due. So, what do you do? You want to, our secretary here, she had put her name down on the list and she wanted to talk. So, here. I did. <laughs> Hey guys, how's everybody doing? <coughs> um, so, real quick, I know we've been having some conversations on, on for a while about this. Um, the e-blasts that are going out, that user information, obviously everybody that's here received it. Yes, you didn't get it from another source, you got it directly from our site, right? We sent that message out. If you are aware of anyone who is not getting messages or is sent to you, they are not getting messages, Please have them contact me directly so we can make sure that their information is updated on our system. We don't want anybody to be left out, um, and that's really key for. Now, also, when you do get those messages, take a moment to respond. 
Um, particularly if it's going to be for an event, if you're going to come, make sure that we know that you're going to yeah. come. That helps us a lot in terms of pre-planning. We're trying to be more efficient with us, our, the organization, as well as with the manufacturers. We don't over, you know, plan over, spend on things that we don't necessarily need to do that for. Um, and also with that in mind, if you have a, a bigger crowd, then they're going to bring more vehicles. So it doesn't make a difference on how people are, are reacting. So yes, that's perfect. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think, um, you know, you guys already are aware, we, we said in the message that we sent out that we wanted to come together today, it's just us, to have conversations about, you know, what the organization is about, what's your vision for the organization, what would you like to see us do that we're not currently doing. Everybody's already aware of the events that we produce as an industry organization, um, but, you know, if there are some activities that y'all are interested in, we've had different kinds of dialogue about this, Paul, over time. It, whether it should be something that relates to training, was it something that relates to professional development for the members themselves, maybe something related to their businesses, because it's a business-oriented organization, but of course we serve the, the auto industry. We want to do the best job we can for that, so what the better we are, then, you know, and if we work together and share resources, that can be helpful as well. Um, I think we have, so we're gonna get into those conversations. If you've got thoughts or ideas that you wanna share, hold on to those real quick. We're gonna do some real, real quick updates. That's fine with you, Paul? Yeah, I'm real checking, quick updates. checking a date or something. So. Okay, um, on what's coming up, and if we can have Bill, we're gonna give you two minutes to give us an update, please, or, or just a recap on, on what happened on February 8th. You wanna talk about that a little bit? Uh, sure, can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Two minutes, and I'm, I'm timing you, the secretary. <laughs> yeah, February 8th, we, we did our, I think it's our seventh annual <coughs> show at the Homestead Air Force Base, and uh, it was the best one yet, even though we actually reduced the size as a request from the base. They were just running into massive problems with security, and, and it, it's a big challenge for them to get everybody kind of herded into one place and keep control, but um, we, we had wonderful Again, participation from our manufacturers. Steve Parrott, very kindly, out of his own pocket, sent down a GTR Nismo version, and uh, had uh, Audi stepped up to the plate. They sent down an R8 Plus. Uh, Alvaro Cabal flew into town for it. Wonderful. He also brought down a uh, Raptor pickup truck and a Mustang GT convertible. So we had really, really good participation from manufacturers. This one made it all extra special. This year, for the first time ever, we actually gave about 15 to 20 rides to deserving uh, Air Force people who were like uh, mechanic of the month, uh, ground crew chief of the month, whatever. Normally, all they do is they get their name put on a little plaque at the side of the roadway on the base. Big deal. You know, anybody can do that. So for them to get out and get rides in the cars of their dreams, they were over the moon happy. It was really fun to do that. And in turn, the base put on a spectacular display of flying for us. And Lance was down there, and honest to God, I mean, these F-16s would come in to almost land, go back onto full power, and they were turning from where Lance is sitting, maybe to that wall. And I'm not exaggerating. They were that close, and it's like, holy shoot. And they did it over and over, so we all had a tremendous thrill out of watching them do that. They were paying us back, and here we were down there trying to pay them back as a thank you. But without having the manufacturers, again, to echo what Marcel was saying, this is the most important thing. Now, they did do a video. Um, if any of you can use it, it's on the Homestead Air Force Base website. It's a great little video. We had everything down there from these brand new cars and manufacturers to hot rods to custom cars. There's a, a real groundswell of participation from people that love cars in this area. And they step up to the plate. And I'm gonna, I'll jump a little bit ahead here. Paul and I had a meeting also at the uh, uh, it, Miami Cancer Institute, is that the name? On Kindle Drive. We did a very small show last year, a number of you were at that. Gonna do it again this year. What's that like? The the first weekend of this, of May. 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 You broke May second. I broke it. 
Yeah, if any of you have specialty cars, no people with specialty cars, something truly outrageous, not, not just ordinary, we're all gonna get like maybe 12 to 18 cars there. It's a static show for the children, for the caregivers at the hospital. Last year, we parked right up front of the hospital. Again, if, if you have the ability, if you don't have a car, but if you have the ability to publicize it, to thank the manufacturers that do step up and, and send cars to it. Again, this, this like Marcelo said, this is a payback event. So if you can, come on out, enjoy the day. It's just gonna be from 10 o'clock in the morning until one o'clock in the afternoon. Very quick, but the joy you see with the children when they get brought out in wheelchairs and they can walk out, whatever, and the joy their parents are getting, oh my God, it, it's a heartwarming day. So, um, I'm, I'm sure you'll remind them again, right, Paul? Yes. Yeah, we'll send out more information as soon as we address this thing. Like that. So we'll know what cars are in the bar and it's garage at the time, so we could, you know, you could come and you don't have to, to, you know, put something on display, but that's always good. You have something. <clears throat> and it's it's amazing. It's amazing what some of the cars that they were interested in last year. I think I had a Wrangler Rubicon. Everybody liked like that, for example. So it doesn't have to be an exotic sports car, although that is good too. No, that, that's a good point. Paul just brought up a, a really good point. I learned the lesson many years ago. One of our rival smiles had been when uh, back when Chevrolet actually used the helmets. They sent down a Corvette and a Camaro and a GM representative said, do you also want a Pontiac Solstice, I something called a little JC, yeah. sort of kind of like a Mazda Miata kind of car. And my first feeling was, no, we got a Corvette, we got a Dodge Viper, why would I want that? And thankfully, I said, sure. It turned to be a crowd favorite because for the children, it's this little car. Now I have to think, okay, look through the eyes of the, of the little people and think of what they might like. So even if you have a friend that's got something unusual, I mean, it, it's huge. And we only need like 18 cars from back so I know Aston Martin have already said they're gonna send a car down. Audi are gonna send a car back down again. Uh, Steve Parrott said, depending on what he has, he will send that down to the show soon. We're getting good manufacturer participation, but last year, private people also brought Custom cars or a couple of hot rods. Lance always brings his uh, beautiful Cadillac station wagon out, which is gorgeous. The kids love. Uh, we had a Ford GT there. That'll be coming back again. A couple of Porsches and on and on. So the more the merrier. It, it, it's a fun day for everybody. Okay, once again, that's May 2nd. Sarah Kendall Drive, right outside the main hospital. It's a new Miami Cancer Institute. And basically, say what? May second from like ten o'clock in the morning till like noon. That's what they said. Right? Yeah, I believe that's that's what it was, and it's it's basically outside in their parking area. All the vehicles are, are, clean, are cleared out of there, and these are put on display. The other thing, of course, that we have coming up is Thomas in Miami. Uh, June fourth is the date, so mark that date for your calendars. That'll be the. I don't anticipate great schedule changes. We've done the same thing about eight or nine years now. So it'll start in the morning with the judging and the cocktail reception that night with the uh, various awards. Uh, we'll be sending out more information. That the manufacturers have been notified, basically, <coughs> of the date. What I'm looking for is some ideas. One of the suggestions that we got at the end of last, after last year's event, well, from one of the people was uh, categories thinking outside the box of course you know it's kind of difficult to say a category like well fun being able to drive well all the convertibles are fun to drive i mean that's my feeling <coughs> but if there's anything but i'd like to really take around with that if there's anybody interested in working with me on that i'll be glad to to meet, to meet with you all just send up an email and, and we'll if you know, one thing I want to do before is set our categories before we send out the final information to the manufacturers so they know where their vehicles are going to fit in. We don't want to have, say, if Mercedes enters two vehicles like they usually do, we don't want to have them both in the same category. And we always try to avoid that. But basically what we've done, we've looked at the 
19 or 20 vehicles that we have and say, okay, we'll have this category, this category, and this category. It's kind of going to have a little bit backwards. So I'd like to remedy that. <coughs> Yeah, I had it. Uh, Joaquin basically said he would be able to do it. Oh, great, Did, did anybody else? Rick? Excellent. Okay. Okay. Just send me a note. Uh, if you were uh, too embarrassed to raise your hand, you can go ahead and send me an email. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe, let's see, your event's coming up in April, too, right? The Florida Car Marathon, what's the date on that? Florida, Florida Car Marathon. Marathon. 24. 24. 24th of April. So, as you can see, Daniel, Daniel Alvarez is out of the country, so he's not here. Our vice president wasn't here. If there's anybody who wants to bring anything up about topless or anything like that, you don't have to be formally invited to the committee. You can send us your, me your ideas and, and we'll work with it. Is there anything else that anybody would not like, like to bring in for anybody have any questions about your event? Just regarding topics, guys, we've been having in our board meeting some discussions about um, as to, uh, Paul mentioned, the different categories, but also just how we would, how we would actually execute the event this year, and the number of participants that we're looking to have, and who gets, who drives the vehicles, etc. We're putting that information together. So once that's been sort of hammered out, we'll send that message out to all the members, so you all are aware of what guidelines and what we're looking to do, and um, then we can go forward with it. But everybody's really excited about this year coming up. Yeah. Random thought I just had. About you talking about possible new categories for topless, why not one for the most clever or most unusual uh, top-down mechanism? Mm -hmm. Thinking something like that's, 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 that's the kind of thing I'm looking for. Is if we can try to come up with some distinguishing thing, I hope. And this depends on, on a, a lot of you people. I don't think anybody in this room is guilty, and I wouldn't accuse anybody of being guilty. A lot of times on this event, people jump in the, the rolls, take it out for half an hour, 45 minutes, and shoot, what, B-roll? Is that what the media calls that? And stuff like this. And, and so I would like to have it so we can get everybody in every car so you can have something like that. Yes. But we can't do it if, 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 the car, if, if a couple of cars are being monopolized. <clears throat> I know last year, I think I did, I don't remember how many cars the judge said, but judge, 12, 12 cars. I think I had 10 done by lunchtime and then was waiting all afternoon for the last two, which happened to be really good cars. Uh, same token, uh, Paul. I understand that we have, let's say, just uh, for, for trying to enrich this discussion, 30 people that wants to drive a Rolls Royce. And they're going to judge it anyway, so we need them to drive it so we have a result of this. But do, among these 30 people that will drive the car, we have five or six members of our association that can give the manufacturer a video that is going to be seen by a lot of people. Why don't we try to make those cars available to these people either the day after or the day before so they will have time to do what they have to do without interfering with the development of our event? Good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Possible. yeah, I think that's a call that we would touch base and we discussed it. Uh, some of the things we're running into that Jaime is referring to is here's a specialty vehicle, um, and you have folks that have a lot of folks in their team, perhaps too many, maybe something we need to discuss. How many can you bring from your team uh, in order to evaluate to give everybody an opportunity to drive? So it's something that, yeah, we can discuss. We talk about Rolls Royce, the future span, ask him, hey, can we have the vehicle one day before? Have them come out uh, to the hotel will work with us, they're super nice. We're there anyway because we're doing the bring receiving everybody in. We do the dinner that evening, so we could have our folks working. You don't need that many, two or three of our guys helping them get out, do the video, do their stuff. That way it matches up with what we're doing. So it's kind of put it together. So we can certainly do that and work it okay. Kind of semi related to that. Sometimes you get people, oh, the Rolls Royce is so cool, but it's not one of the cars they judge, but they'll take it out anyway. Shouldn't those people be lower on the pecking order versus the ones that actually have the vehicle under ballot and somebody be like a gatekeeper to make sure 
you're you know the first one served the yeah. ones that are ac actually voting for the the, uh, the idea was to have those people who did that the people if they were when we were assigning uh, certain categories to eliminate it, that to certain people the idea was they would finish up in the morning the afternoon and somebody would take something out that wasn't on their list but that hasn't worked the other thing is is that some of our members are, have corporate memberships, and they will have three or four people. <coughs> Hello? Three or four people <clears throat> from the company. That's fine. But I mean, we're looking at possibly limiting the number of actual people who can take the cars out from that thing. We haven't really refined that yet. But, uh, and I don't want to offend anybody and say, make them like a second class citizen, but if entity B, channel up the other, has five people and all five of them want to drive this one car that's not really right I mean, that, that's not what we're looking for we want to have as many different people with these things as possible that's something since you volunteered we can talk further <laughs> and you too we're going to now that you've all sat down we'll send you out now to the buffet line tony can hear can maria hear He's not saying anything. Exactly. Bill, can you hear? Me? No, we're you know we're going to be eating off the buffet out here, so I guess we can, might as well just go on out and and it's go. We'll and we'll, we'll have our business. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> Perfect. First of all, thank you for two things. One for coming. We appreciate your support. And the other, Marcella has revealed that all of you brought checks for dues. Yay. So everybody in this here is paid up. So when you see other people around here at events, you can fill in their cases. You don't have to worry about it, right? No, we have a few things that we want to talk about. And of course, obviously, we want to talk about whatever you all want to talk about. Uh, one thing, uh, Marcel, you want to come up and start giving us a treasury report. And also talk to you about what the situation is with manufacturers and our future schedule for lunches. Thank you, Mr. President. <coughs> uh, so yeah, actually great news. Where everybody that's present has paid, everybody that's here, so we greatly appreciate that. Obviously, as a not-for-profit, it does help all this money to come in so we can do this kind of luncheons so or we need to and gatherings. And so forth. So thank you for that. The treasury report right now is at two thousand two hundred and fifty-seven dollars. So we have in the treasury right now. Uh, we met at a board meeting at the first of the month, and we talked about this month coming up, and we did not have a sponsor, and we decided to get us all together and kind of have an open forum where we can talk about some of the needs you guys feel we need to improve, how to improve, and just continue strengthening. Uh, the association. One of the things I mentioned to the, to the board that was present was um, I've been visiting uh, a lot of the manufacturers and, and the feelings are is, you know, the state, the state of, of, of sales and so forth right now, it's kind of a, a bit of a, a slow heading down and um, they're trying to find what is the best return for investment for them. So as you well know, when they bring a car, they have to fly a car in, ship a car in, uh, then he has to usually come to facilities or a garage shop and so forth, the car gets driven. They have to fly executives, they have to pay for hotels uh, and so forth, and they have to pay for the meal. It may not sound a lot, but their budgets have been constrained. So they're really trying to find where they should be putting some of the money at. Of course, uh, providing the vehicles for evaluation for you guys is the top priority and how we can, and, and some of the ideas we discuss is how can we make it this manufacturers who want to come and join us on this monthly luncheons and what are we going to give them in return? So the return of investment, what are we going to do uh, in return? Some of the things I'd like to see, and, and you've probably been hearing from Angelo, and I'm sure you hear from everybody about, excuse me, the vehicles you're reviewing and the importance of getting these reviews now. Uh, we're being engaged, everybody's being engaged, the manufacturers being engaged, the public relations, uh, management teams being engaged and all this stuff. So it's kind of changing. It's 2020 and it's, it's evolving. So I think it's kind of open forum. Uh, 
of what we can do to really attract as many patches if we have a particular client that comes in, brings a vehicle, and what can we do in return to write stories and get the stories back to them, get them to your audience, whether it's video, whether it's newspaper, however you're doing social media, and we put it back together and we send it back to them, showing numbers, algorithms. You spend $15,000, but you're gonna get in return $280,000, $1 million worth for bringing your vehicle here and showcasing it with us. So I think it's something uh, to discuss and be open for. And you know we're here to, to talk about it with you guys. Thank you. <laughs> you guys ask you for work, but that's what you're doing. So Woody, do you want to our secretary here? She had put her name down on the list of some of the talks. So here. I <laughs> Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Um, so Real quick, I know we've been having some conversations on, uh, for a while about this. Um, the e-blasts that are going out, that user information, obviously everybody that's here received it. Yes, you didn't get it from another source, you got it directly from our site, right? We sent that message out. If you are aware of anyone who is not getting messages, who are sent to you, they are not getting messages, please have them contact me directly so we can make sure that their information is updated on our system. We don't want anybody to be left out. Um, and that's really key for now. Also, when you do get those messages, take a moment to respond. Um, particularly if it's going to be for anybody, if you're going to come, make sure that we know that you're going to come. That helps us a lot in terms of pre planning. We're trying to be more efficient with us, our the organization, as well as with the manufacturers. We don't over, you know, plan over spend on things that we don't necessarily need to do that for. Um, and also, with that in mind, if you have a, a bigger crowd, then they're going to bring more vehicles. So it does right. make a difference on how people are, are reacting. So, yes, that's perfect. Okay. Um, I think, um, you know, you guys are already aware, we, we said in the message that we sent out that we wanted to come together today, it's just us, to have conversations about, you know, what the organization is about, what's your vision for the organization, what would you like to see us do that we're not currently doing. Everybody's already aware of the events that we produce as an industry organization. Um, but, you know, if there's some activities that y'all are interested in, we've had different kinds of dialogue about this, Paul, over time. It's whether it should be something that relates to training, was it something that relates to professional development for the members themselves, maybe something related to their businesses, because it's a business-oriented organization, but of course we serve the, the auto industry. We want to do the best job we can for that, so what, the better we are, then, you know, and we can work together and share resources, that can be helpful as well. Um, I think we have, so we're gonna get into those conversations. So if you've got thoughts or ideas that you wanna share, hold on to those real quick. We're gonna do some real, real quick updates. That's fine with you, Paul? Yes. Yeah, I'm real quick updates. checking a date or something. So. Okay, um, on what's coming up, and if we can have Bill, we're gonna give you two minutes to give us an update, please, or, or just a recap on, on what happened on February 8th. You wanna talk about that real quick? Uh, sure, can you repeat your thing? Yes. Two minutes, and I'm, I'm timing you, the secretary. <laughs> yeah, February 8th, we, we did our, I think it's our seventh annual <coughs> show down at the Homestead Air Force Base, and uh, it was the best one yet, even though we actually reduced the size as a request from the base. They were just running into massive problems with security, and, and it, it's a big challenge for them to get everybody kind of herded into one place and keep control, but um, we, we had wonderful Again, participation from our manufacturers. Steve Parrott, very kindly, out of his own pocket, sent down a GTR Nismo version. And uh, had uh, Audi stepped up to the plate, they sent down an R8 Plus. Uh, Alvaro Cabal flew into town for it. Wonderful. He also brought down a uh, Raptor pickup truck and a Mustang GT convertible. So we had really, really good participation from manufacturers. This one made it all extra special. This year, for the first time ever, we actually gave about 15 to 20 rides to deserving uh, Air Force people who were like uh, mechanic of the month, uh, ground crew chief of the month, whatever. Normally, all I do is they get their name put on a little plaque at the side of the roadway on the base. Big deal. You know, anybody can do that. So for them to get out and get rides in the cars of their dreams, they were over the moon happy. It's really fun to do that. 
And in turn, DeBase put on a spectacular display of flying for us. That Lance was down there, and honest to God, I mean, these F-16s would come in to almost land, go back onto full power, and they were turning from where Lance is sitting, maybe to that wall. And I'm not exaggerating, they were that close, and it's like, holy shoot. And they did it over and over, so we all had a tremendous thrill out of watching them do that. They were paying us back, and here we were down there trying to pay them back as a thank you. But without having the manufacturers, again, to echo what Marcel was saying, this is the most important thing. Now, they did do a video. Um, if any of you can use it, it's on the Homestead Air Force Base website, and it's a great little video. We had everything down here from these brand new cars and manufacturers to hot rods to custom cars. There's a, a real groundswell of participation from people that love cars in this area. And they step up to the plate. And I'm gonna I'll jump a little bit ahead here. Paul and I had a meeting also at the uh, uh, where is Miami Cancer Institute, is that right? <laughs> on Kindle Drive. We did a very small show last year, a number of you were at that. Gonna do it again this year. What's that, like the, the first weekend of, of May? May. May. You broke it? May 2nd, I broke it. Yeah, if any of you have specialty cars, know people with specialty cars, something truly outrageous, not, not just ordinary, we're all gonna get like, maybe 12 to 18 cars there. It's a static show for the children, for the caregivers at the hospital. Last year, we parked right up front of the hospital. Again, if, if you have the ability, if you don't have a car, but if you have the ability to publicize it, to thank the manufacturers that do step up and, and send cars to it. Again, this, this like Marcelo said, this is a payback for them. So if you can, come on out and enjoy the day. It's just going to be from 10 o'clock in the morning until 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Very quick, but the joy you see with the children when they get brought out in wheelchairs and they can walk out, whatever, and the joy their parents are getting, oh my God, it's a heartwarming day. So um, I'm, I'm sure you'll remind them again, right, Paul? Yeah, we'll send out more information as soon as we address this thing. Like so we'll know what cars are in the bar in his garage at the time, so we could, you know, you could come and you don't have to, to, you know, put something on display, but that's always good if you have something. <coughs> and it's a, it's amazing. It's amazing what some of the cars that they were interested in last year. I think I had a Wrangler Rubicon. Everybody liked it like that, for example. So it doesn't have to be an exotic sports car, although that is good too. No, that, that's a good point. Paul just brought up a really good point. I learned the lesson many years ago, one of our rival smiles had been when, uh, back when Chevrolet actually used to help us. They sent down a Corvette and a Camaro, and the GM representative said, Do you also want a Pontiac Solstice? And they called that the little JC. Yeah. Kind of like a Mazda Miata kind of car. And my first feeling was, No, we got a Corvette, we got a Dodge Viper, now why do I want that? And thankfully, I said, Sure, it turned to be a crowd favorite because for the children, it's this little car. Now I have to think, okay, look through the eyes of the, of the little people and think of what they might like. So even if you have a friend that's got something unusual, I mean, it, it's huge. And we only need like 18 cars max. So I know Aston Martin have already said they're going to send a car down. Audi are going to send a car back down again. Uh, Steve Parrott said, depending on what he has, he will send that down to the show. So we're getting good manufacturer participation, but last year, private people also brought uh, custom cars or a couple of hot rods. Lance always brings his uh, beautiful Cadillac station wagon out, which is gorgeous, the kids love. Um, we had a Ford GT there, that'll be coming back again. A couple of Porsches and on and on. So. The more the merrier, it, it, it's a fun day for everybody. Okay, once again, that's May 2nd, Sarah Kendall Drive, right outside the main hospital. It's the new Miami Cancer Institute. And basically, say what? May 2nd, from like 10 o'clock in the morning until like yeah. noon. That's what they said, right? A couple hours. Yeah, I believe that's, that's what it was. And it's, it's basically outside in their parking area. All the vehicles are, are, clean, are cleared out of there. Mm -hmm. And these are put on display. The other thing, of course, that we have coming up 
is Thomas in Miami. Uh, June 4th is the date, so mark that date for your calendars. That'll be the, I don't anticipate great schedule changes. We've done the same thing about eight or nine years now. So it'll start in the morning with the judging and the cocktail reception that night with the uh, various awards. Uh, we'll be sending out more information that the manufacturers have been notified, basically, <coughs> of the date. What I'm looking for is some ideas. One of the suggestions that we got at the end of last, after last year's event, well, from one of the people was uh, categories. Thinking outside the box, of course, you know, it's kind of difficult to say a category like, well, fun being able to drive. Well, all the convertibles are fun to drive. I mean, that's my feeling. <clears throat> but if there's anything, but I'd like to really tinker around with, with that. If there's anybody interested in working with me on that, I'll be glad to, to meet, meet with you all. Just send up an email and, and we'll get you. One thing I want to do before is set our categories before we send out the final information to the manufacturers so they know where their vehicles are going to fit in. We don't want to have, say, if Mercedes enters two vehicles like they usually do, we don't want them both in the same category. And we always try to avoid that. But basically what we've done, we've looked at the 19 or 20 vehicles that we have and say, okay, we'll have this category, this category, and this category. It's kind of going about it a little bit backwards. So I'd like to remedy that. Are you asking for please? Yeah, I have. Uh, Joaquin basically said he would be anybody else? Rick? Excellent. Okay. Okay. Just send me a note. Uh, if you were uh, too embarrassed to raise your hand, you can go ahead and send me an email. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe, let's see, your event's coming up in April too, right? The Florida Car Marathon. What's the date on that? Florida Car Marathon. 24th. 24th of April. As you can see, Daniel, or Daniel Alvarez is out of the country, so he's not here, our vice president wasn't here. If there's anybody who wants to bring anything up about the top or anything like that, you don't have to be formally invited to the committee to send us your, me your ideas and, and we'll work with it. Uh, is there anything else that anybody would not like, like to bring in or anybody have any questions about your event? Just regarding topics, guys, we've been having in our board meeting some discussions about, um, as t uh, Paul mentioned, the different categories, but also just how we would how we would actually execute the event this year, and the number of participants that we're looking to have, and who gets who drives the vehicles, etc. We're putting that information together. So once that's been sort of hammered out, we'll send that message out to all the members, so you all are aware of what guidelines and what we're looking to do. And um, then we can go forward with it. But everybody's really excited about this year coming in. Yeah. Random thought I just had about you talking about possible new categories for topless. Why not one for the most clever or most unusual uh, top down mechanism? Mm -hmm. Thinking something like that. That's, that's, like that's, that's the kind of thing I'm looking for, is if we can try to come up with some distinguishing thing. I hope. And this depends on, on a, a lot of you people. I don't think anybody in this room is guilty, and I wouldn't be accusing anybody of being guilty. A lot of times on this event, people jump in the, the rolls, take it out for half an hour and 45 minutes, and shoot, what, B roll? Is that what the media calls that? And stuff like this. And, and so I would like to have it so we can get everybody in every car so you can have something like that. Yes. But we can't do it if we just. If the car, if a couple of cars are being monopolized, <clears throat> I know last year I think I did. I don't remember how many cars the judge said. If I judged 12, 12 cars, I think I had ten done by lunchtime, and then was waiting all afternoon for the last two, which happened to be really good cars. <laughs> Same token, uh, Paul. I understand that we have, let's say, just uh, for. for trying to reach this discussion. 30 people that wants to drive a Rolls Royce. And they're going to judge it anyway, so we need them to drive it so we have a result of this. But do, among these 30 people that will drive the car, we have five or six members of our association that can give the manufacturer 
a video that is going to be seen by a lot of people. Why don't we try to make those cars available to these people either the day after or the day before so they will have time to do what they have to do without interfering with the development of our event. It's a good idea. It's possible. It's possible. Yeah, I think that's a call that we would touch base and we discuss it. Uh, some of the things we're running into that Jaime is referring to is here's a specialty vehicle uh, and you have folks that have a lot of folks in their team, perhaps too many, maybe something we need to discuss. How many can you bring from your team uh, in order to evaluate to get everybody an opportunity to drive? So it's something that, yeah, we can discuss. Talk about Rolls Royce to Jerry Span, ask him, hey, can we have the vehicle one day before? Have them come out uh, to the hotel and work with us. They're super nice. We're there anyway because we're doing the bringing, receiving everybody in. We do the dinner that evening. So we could have our folks working. You don't need that many, two or three of our guys helping them get out, do the video, do their stuff. That way it matches up with what we're doing. So it's kind of put it together. So we can certainly do that and work it okay. Kind of semi-related to that. Sometimes you get people, oh, the Rolls Royce is so cool, but it's not one of the cars they judge, but they'll take it out anyway. Shouldn't those people be lower on the pecking order versus the ones that actually have the vehicle and they're valid and somebody be like a gatekeeper to make sure you're, you know, the first ones are the yeah, ones that are actually voting for? The, the, the idea was to have those people who did that, the people, if they were, when we were signing, uh, certain categories to eliminate it, that to certain people. The idea was they would finish up in the morning, the afternoon, and somebody could take something out that wasn't on their list. But that hasn't worked. The other thing is, is that some of our members are, have corporate memberships, and they would have three or four people. <clears throat> Hello, three or four people <clears throat> from the company. That's fine, but I mean we're looking at possibly limiting the number of actual people who can take the cars out from that thing. We haven't really refined that yet, but, uh, and I don't want to offend anybody and say, make them like a second class citizen, but if entity B, channel Omtia, has five people and all five of them want to drive this one car, that's not really right. That, that's not what we're looking for. We want to have as many different people with these things as possible. That's something since you volunteered, we can talk further <laughs> and you too. But, 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 but it's good that you mentioned that. When we test drive cars, often we'll do B-roll or running footage. And one of the things that we run into when we're driving the car is we're talking about the car and we have no, no exterior because we're in the car. Uh, we've had some of the other members' partners saying, okay, you shoot my running footage, something like that, but I don't know if anyone else who does video has the same challenges, but it's something that, you know, we may want to consider coordinating beforehand how we can get some folks together to, hey, you're riding in front of me, give me 10 seconds of that running footage. We do, we do a lot of that work, you know, a lot of the press kits you see, which is finished with the Kia with the Sultan, so I sent a team a month prior to, and to do good models with folks that you guys know. So it's very familiar how to drive the car. So yes, you're right. So you're able, they're able to drive the car either for you so you can take the shots that you need and you can barely see them. They put glasses on, you can't tell who's, in, or they can be the ones driving you as you're filming. So we do that a lot. We do that for a lot of the lunches. So we can certainly help with folks. We have folks that do this all the time every day. We can provide you guys with that. Uh, I'm not sure if the same day, if that works for you guys, maybe I have a group of guys that want to do it, we can certainly have a lot of that. Well, wherever there's an opportunity to do any <coughs> coordination, that would be advised for us too. Sure, yeah, Sharpie, uh, Grimaud, like they're all, they do this all the time. So it will be the left, that's a great point, yeah. The left, left, you guys. Anybody else? <coughs> I got the order, please. Okay, okay. Uh, and we think, going to be October yeah. and that's going to be nominations for the election in November for the board. Last year we had candidates to replace the actual, the, the current board. But the thing is we have the nominations in October and we have the election in November and we don't have time to listen or to get acquainted with what the new candidates want to do with SAMA for the future. 
Why don't we open, of course, the nominations as established by the bylaws are going to be officialized in October for the election in November. But if we know sooner who really wants to be president, vice president, treasurer, or secretary of the board of SAMA, and what they propose to do with the association. What are their ideas, if they want to you know, establish new events, or if they want to do this or that. So the, we, the members of the association, when we decide who is going to be what, we know what they're bringing to the table. Can we do that? Can we just open? No. Informally, if you're going to be a candidate for president, you can start your campaign. Maybe earlier, like in September? Or maybe one of the, one of the luncheons, we can say, who is interested, raise your hands, what are your positions, and we can meet. Yes, that's a good Start idea. Start your campaign. What do you bring to the table? What do you want to do with the association? What is it? There is also a suggestion that instead of one-year terms, some a member has suggested that we go to two-year terms. I, I don't know how I'll feel about that. But in a way, it would be good. That's something that we can discuss, and if we have to do... And what you do is try to stagger them. So one person is elected for a two-year term now, but another person isn't elected for a two-year term for another year, so that you have that leadership continuing, and the people who have been in it know the history. So in other words, Rick, what you're saying is, say, the president and the secretary get elected on odd number yes. years, Right. and the vice president and the treasurer an even a, number of years. It's a, it's a good way to continue what you guys have done so that the people that are on that board know the history. If somebody gets on for one year and they get bounced out, they haven't learned anything. Those are good ideas, True. but that represents a change of the bylaws. Okay. Right. I understand. Right. I was so going to say it's based on what I Maybe in the next event that we have, or even today, that can be presented today to the members and discussed and approved rejected in the next meeting of the month. We'll have our very efficient secretary put that on the agenda for our next board meeting. <laughs> yes. We're talking about you. <laughs> it's fine, I'm good. <laughs> it's fine. Because I'll sleep between now and then forget everything completely. Did you expect us to remember who all you called? That's why I asked you to call me. <laughs> No, that, that's that's good. How would y'all feel about it? the officers having like two-year terms? Is there any any particular objections to that? The shorter the term, the sooner the campaign to be reelected starts. That's true. Can I say so? True. That's a point. Yes. I want to give you my opinion. Yes. Oh, can you go ahead? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to give a couple of uh, opinions I have. We have a problem that we have to fix. Okay. We have to pinpoint the problem and we have to fix it. We are losing popularity with attendance of manufacturing cars. For many reasons. Marcelo yes, list a big reason. List of reasons. Man, blah, 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 blah. The main reason is how profitable is this event. So think about it. Fifteen hundred dollars for the lunch. 2,000 to bring people, engineer, in tickets, hire somebody to bring the cars and get it out, $5,000. I run the website and I know who publish but who doesn't publish. About 30 people, 3 0, publish in our association. If we had 30 people today here, those people, they will reach probably 50, about 50 outlets. I publish in two outlets, you publish in different outlets. You go on YouTube and you go on TV, blah, blah, blah. So if you spend $5,000 and you have 50 pieces, that's $100 a piece, cheap. We we'll have a line there. But that's not happening. Why? Because there is a problem with the timing. And I've been repeating this for a long time. Today there is a Corvette event in Las Vegas. Yeah. There's coming another one in Vancouver, uh, British Columbia. We just came back from the Celtos and from the Toyota. People are traveling. So today, the big hitters, the people that are always invited, are the people who have more traffic. And let's come back to that world. In the old times, circulation was king. Today, traffic is king. So those people, Alvarez, Javier Abandoni, etc., etc., Javier Mota, 
that is gonna reach 100,000 people per team or more, or maybe half a million dollars per team. They're invited. If they will be here today, there will be a lineup of five manufacturers, but they cannot be here. So, we cannot have lunches at this time, Monday to Friday, period. We have to invent, we have to accommodate to Saturday brunch, everybody's in town, Saturday dinner, lunch on Saturday, Monday morning, if you don't go to church, maybe you can do a brunch, I don't know. That's one idea. If we get everybody here, the 30 publishers here, there will be a big, big commotion in the industry, and we will be good business. If we don't change that, no matter what we do, we change president, this vice president, no, the whole thing is going to down. Because without manufacturers, we have no reason to exist. That's one. Number two, topless in Miami. I've been saying this for many times. Love the show. The idea is wonderful. One in a million. But there are 50 convertibles in the market. We judge seven. That's it. Well, there was nine or 18 vehicles and we split nine and nine. Okay, nine convertibles out of 50. So, can I say this is a convertible of the, the year? Can I judge a Mustang convertible without competing with a Camaro convertible? You know what I'm saying? So, I think that since with the system today, we are subject to the fee paid by a manufacturer to get it in, which is thousands of dollars, and if he doesn't want to invest, we don't have that car, we're limited, we're completely castrated. What we need to do is that we choose the cars, there's no fee entrance, and we'll get the money from the sponsors. So, we say, okay, we want a Corvette, we want this, and we'll see how we get it. We have to rent it, we have to ask for it to be loaned to a dealer, whatever it takes. But we will have the cars that we believe conform a group that is worth to compete. That was it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One thing about the uh, convertibles that I've run into in the past. I know uh, Jaguar, for example, won. I know their f type was won. Their XKR won. So they had winners and they didn't want to bring that car back the next year. So that kind of limits our choices. That the way they do, some of them, I guess at least one of them was looking at it. This is a, was an example of preview something new from their fleet and they didn't want to bring back something old. So if there was some way, you know, if we have classes that recognize some of these as maybe, I don't know, classic convertibles or something like this that would be old or old favorites or something like this as far as categories that would induce, say, Jaguar to bring back that F type, which I wouldn't object to. <laughs> But no, to, to bring back some of the cars, you know, the Miata has been there every year and won it. So, I mean, that's, but I don't know how, you know, Tamara, whether she's going to continue to do that. I hope she does. But she's one I heard back from. But to, at any rate, that's the kind of thing we're looking for as far as some of the categories. Not necessarily $50,000 or up or sports cars or roasters or whatever. But I mean, something along this line that would entice them to bring some of those cars like that back. Because it doesn't make it, you know, I, I see nothing wrong with say, give me that F type, a price, if, if it's a favor of the move, whether it's new for this year or not. I think uh, it's not like the other show where we're looking for brand new things like that. Yeah, I think, I mean, those are great ideas, and this is what we do. This. So I do agree with some of the ideas. It's a little bit more complicated. I do like the fact that. Topless, and we would have all the convertibles. Who would not want to have that? And not only that, but I would bring your point one to have Javier Montana Vasquez and Gavaldoni with us would also strengthen the event without a doubt. So that date is already chosen, but it would help all of us, the association, the industry, the South Florida market, without a doubt. For the rentals, there's a couple of things, caveats you have to think about. Also, the insurance factor. So when you, when you rent a Hertz convertible, under my name, we have to put some kind of blanket uh, insurance that is covered. I'm not saying that it's not impossible. And maybe you have to tell them that your car is going to be driven by 35 people. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So, so <laughs> it's not impossible. It's not even possible. Well, an umbrella, an umbrella can be taken, an, an insurance umbrella can be taken out. Could, could we have 50 vehicles? That's going to be possible in three months. 
But maybe we try, we get to, can get together and find maybe five after we do some of this homework and find out who's not going to participate and what we feel are convertible to should be present. Maybe we'd start with trying five, instead of jumping into the whole thing, it's kind of hard and finding, even to find sponsors in three months, it's hard. People don't want to pay, I mean, you know how it is. Sure. Even if it's not automotive related. But maybe we do give it a try, let it, for, for example, and I mean, a manufacturer doesn't want, I can't say the name, doesn't want to participate. Uh, then we go get that particular vehicle, find out how we can rent it, how we can have it, where people can drive it, if there's an, uh, another umbrella insurance we have to take, so everybody's where it gets in the car's covering in case of an incident. Uh, we haven't had any incidents ever, but just maybe Murphy Law would apply. And then, <laughs> we have, that and then maybe we do have the, the five vehicles that you feel are really strong for convertible, we could not get, and we start with five or 10, and then give it a try and see how, how it, it morphs, how we can get it going. So, we're not, we're not opposed to it. I think it's just a couple of little caveats you have to twitch. Go ahead. About, uh, I'm going to play devil's advocate here to Pepe's idea about doing the, the meetings on the weekends. I'm, I'm fine with that, and it might make it easier for the A-listers among us to attend. But how do you think the manufacturers would, would, would feel? Do you think they would be willing to work on weekends? In Miami, yeah. So? In Miami? Yeah. I will point out that we did send out a That's survey true. sometime last year with, uh, when it came to, I know when we were talking about having our meeting down at the Speedway, the Speedway was offering us, I believe, a Saturday morning or, or a Saturday or during the week. And, and most of the membership responses that we got, they wanted it during the week. Mm -hmm. So there is, there is that. It doesn't have to be, I guess, at noon. It could be another time. Maybe that I uh, really would like to get some of the members who are traveling uh, and, and do get a lot of more out of town assignments. Uh, get them, a, you know, have for them to have the opportunity to get to our regular monthly, monthly luncheons because some we haven't seen some in quite a while. They used to be quite regular to the start. If you have it, if you talk to any of those people, I can think of names, but I won't mention names because I'll probably forget somebody. But if you, if you see some, somebody who used to attend and hasn't been to well, find out you know, why why they can't get it. If it's a work schedule, it's not a whole lot we can do about it, but uh, if it's some other reason, we definitely want to know about it. Well, I'd also point out, I think some of the manufacturers are not really looking at a monthly schedule very much either because they'll have conflicting events on the same day. If we move lunches in a weekday later, after five, you will have the people who are working. Yeah. Do you think it'll work? <laughs> what does this work? I guess we can say that there's probably pros and cons to any direction that we take. Um, I think as a, as a body and as an organization and with the people that we work with, particularly the manufacturing world, we have to consider what makes the most sense for everybody concerned. We're never going to be able to set it where it's pleasing to everybody all the time. It's just not possible when you've got multiple people. But, we certainly want to explore what other options there are. And there are some good ones that are on the table. You know, one of the things when we talk about a weekend type thing is do manufacturers or representatives want to travel on weekends? They're traveling during the week already. They want to be home on the weekends. Miami, so you, yeah. so you never know, you know, what, what the scenarios are. But I think regardless of whether people can come or not, I think one of the things we want to make sure that we're having stronger participation and engagement from our members, whether they come to the monthly meetings or not, when we send out information to them, you know, we can do some individual calls. I'll certainly take it upon myself to call some folks. Just let's get your feedback about what you think about the organization because you're still we a can tell member. You. you know, you're still a part of it. We value your your um, your thoughts and your ideas, so we can implement that the best we can. So, some of the things I was thinking, as you were mentioning, maybe we do, maybe we give it a try. If we do it, like a Sama car and coffee One. on a Saturday morning. Yeah. So you know, yeah. the, the manufacturer will fly in on a on a, on a Friday. Yeah. yeah. And then they have the option if you leave by one o'clock, two o'clock on Saturday, or it is Miami, they can stay, they can stay for the weekend. Great idea, great idea, great idea. Then maybe you do like a cars, maybe you do like a sama cars and coffee, which is kind of like yeah. tied up like this. Excellent. And do like a breakfast for the in one hour. Excellent. And then ideally if we can have this three guns, big guns, four guns that would only yeah. elevate and make it, so we can get everything back in track. So I'm not opposed to doing something. I'm not saying we move them all the time, 
perhaps some adventures cannot, but maybe we, we can, can try. Well, from what that you're saying, too, since we're, we're here to kind of hash out some of the challenges we're having and, and come away with some solutions, that's a great idea. Yeah. Maybe in the first one that we do, we, you know, it, it, maybe in a weekend or a month when we don't have to manufacture and sponsor, then we can decide amongst ourselves who's available for that particular Saturday in that month. I, I think that the idea, if it's okay with you guys, would be like to contact Javier Mota, Alaska's yeah. Galadonis, you know, yeah. those five folks that are always traveling, traveling that are yes. really giving a good name yeah. for South Florida. See if their dates, their schedule, give them enough time, give them enough yeah. time. Yeah. Then we can approach the manufacturers, say we're gonna do this breakfast thing, so kind of, and, and just kind of get a feel for sure. it before it all takes place. I don't know how you guys feel about it. And maybe if they're not able to come, we can select a car from one of the, the, the line that you have and something that, that's special about it or whatever. And we'll have that vehicle be selected and that'll be a benefit to them in a way. And then we can show them what was given in return. Exactly. And we can do Without them having to pay them. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. we, we want to make sure they stay engaged that way. But they like that. those who have been really committed to what we're doing, it's like a benefit. It's another added value um, that we can share with them. Joaquin, you know, yes, our question changing the subject. I remember seeing, I forget if it was in the email inviting to this or an update to the. Uh, up to the calendar of events on the new Sama site, it said something about Hot Wheels something or other. Is that was well, that's the Baptist of Information. That's what I was going to ask. So that's that's the formal name for the Baptist of Information. Yes. What is it? It's, it's hot. It was it was Hot Wheels blah 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 yeah, something or other. Hot Wheels Fun Day. Exactly. Yeah. So so so, yeah, so that's, that's, that's the that's the. That was just an I have a question. I have a question. Anybody maintaining that website? It has news from May last year. Is anybody, the, the calendar is also bad? I don't have to ask Jonathan. Yeah. The calendar? Yeah. The last launch was wrong. And it hasn't been touched since May 2019. We've been putting stuff up there. We've been putting some stuff up there. No, check it out. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, that's great because if you guys are paying attention, you see something that needs to be corrected, let us know. You know, everybody is everybody is super, super busy and running their businesses and, and doing their jobs. And we do this as a volunteer organization, right? So whatever you see, if you've got ideas or recommendations, please don't hesitate to we hold the ideas and share busy. them so we can... Yeah, but so we can fix it though. If you tell me, then now we can go, yeah. go make sure that we go make sure that it's, that it's taken care of, okay? I have another... Okay. No, I just would like to say that if you have, if you, if you set a day for a big event like Topless in Miami, I think it's not enough to have it in the calendar because if you want Javier Mota, Jaime Abaldoni, those people sure. that you should have their commitment like three or four months before by now, you should have their commitment so they don't take uh, nothing for June 4 because they know the events that That's day. Right. But it's, they are not going to the calendar every, every every month to see what, what is the event. Exactly. You're right, and that's understood. I think though traditionally over the years, we've been doing this nine years now, it's, it's always either the very last of May or the first weekend of June. It's never changed from that time period. But you're right, notification to people, those are the things that we talk about when we come here to the meetings and say, hey, don't forget, mark it on your calendar, but if you're not here, you may not catch that information. So, to the point that, that Marcelo made, if you're talking to each other, you know, hey, did you hear about that? We, we've got our top of state, are you planning on being there? You know, um, we're doing a Miami event at Miami um, Cancer Center, are you planning on being there? Talking to each other about that and reminding each other because things, they slip by sometimes and, and it does require some planning. Any okay, questions? Get, open get question? Did you have something else? Yeah, something else I found. I remember something. You know, I was talking about circulation in a magazine. We're talking about traffic in the electronic web era. We all need traffic. Traffic means interest. From who? Who's going to pay the bills? No traffic, nothing happens. Why don't we set up some kind of strategy to use SAMA to promote our web where we write? For example, Amazon spends half a million dollars a day in Google Ads. That's not a lot. He has one million merchants and he's doing half a million for everybody. When you split it, it's very little. The same, maybe SAMA 
could spend some money, maybe a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars a month in Google to promote us, magazine, car reviews, automobiles, revista de autos. So if more people will see your articles, your articles, your articles, your articles, and click in your place. Because the summer web doesn't have content at all. You just click to your place. Yeah. Maybe it's an idea. It's something to help the members, which are the writers, or the producers, or the filmmakers. That's what it is, more traffic. Frankly, I'm a little lost there because I work for a dining industry for most of the group of, of the public also in attendance. They're looking at us like, what's going on here? They want to know why are these cars here? Maybe we could take that and parlay that into some type of a promotion for the manufacturers also and take advantage of the fact that we're at these public places with people. Mm -hmm. Make it a more public event. Maybe invite members of the press who aren't automotive writers mm -hmm. to be there to write regular articles mm -hmm. because we're like a small group only in the automotive industry and we need to branch out and to get into the, into the whole public, not just among ourselves. We're all preaching to the choir here. They also are mystified by what's going on with the Ritz Carlton. Yeah, they're asking the people to see people on what's going on. Around town still. Or maybe, yeah. maybe plan our meetings to coincide with other events like Cars and Coffee or, or some type of show where there's something else going on also. Okay. 